today we're going to be doing some environmental engineering. So the goal for today is to build a structure of at least eight inches tall that can survive an earthquake. So we're going to use toothpicks or if you have coffee stirrers, you could use those as well as clay to build a structure of at least eight inches tall, which can survive an earthquake. What you're going to need to make our shake table is two thick pieces of cardboard, two tennis balls, some rubber bands, tape, and a ruler or paint stir, or I have this paintbrush that's long, um, just something that you could use as a handle for our shake table. So what is an earthquake? In order to answer this question, we need to understand how the earth is made. So think of it like a peach. A peach has its solid inner seed surrounded by the peach fruit, which is soft and um, more liquid than the inner core. And then uh, uh, surrounding the peach is the skin of the peach. And our earth is made very similarly. The earth is formed with a solid inner core and on top of it, surrounding it, is a softer, more liquid outer core made of magma. On top of the magma is the mantle, which is divided into tectonic plates, which are always moving on the earth. Now, these plates can collide or rub against each other, or they can separate. And when they, um, Mostly when they collide or rub against each other, they cause earthquakes, as well as other natural features like volcanoes. Earthquakes are most destructive because they can collapse buildings, which is why we need to engineer our buildings with earthquakes and other natural factors in mind. About 90% of earthquakes occur in the zone called the Ring of Fire. But there are other fault lines or spots where tectonic plate boundaries are close together, which can cause earthquakes. And Memphis happens to be close to the New Madrid seismic zone in Missouri. So it is important that we build our buildings with earthquake risk in mind. We will use the scientific method to design and test our buildings. First, we must ask a question. How can we build a structure with which can withstand earthquakes? You will construct a hypothesis of what structure would be the most able to withstand an earthquake. You will test your experiment. After we build our shape table in our structure, you will actually test it out to see if your structure holds up. Then, if it was working, we can work to improve the structure even more to make it more sound. Or if it didn't work, we can go back to the planning phase and try again. Today, we are going to make our own shake table, which is a miniature version of what engineers actually use to test their building designs. So let's get started by building our shake table. What you're going to do is you're going to take your two pieces of cardboard. And as you can see, I ended up taping two pieces of cardboard that I cut out from a package um, together because when I tried it out, the cardboard wasn't strong enough on its own. So taping them together will just strengthen it. So I have my two pieces here and what I'm going to do is put my rubber band on it. second rubber band on the other side and space them about four inches apart. Now we're going to lift it up and slide our tennis balls in between the two pieces of cardboard. And now we're going to just tape our handle on and let's see how it works. Seems shaky enough to me. Now we're going to design our own structure. So think about your aim as you design and what would be effective in carrying out that goal. So our aim is to make an eight inch structure which can withstand, withstand the shaking from our earthquake. 
So go ahead and brainstorm how you are going to design your structure and then get started. to my shake table here and now let's test it out. Okay, well, it didn't collapse, but I have a lot of loose ends here um, and some pieces have fallen down, so I do think I would need to do some restructuring, um, even though it didn't completely collapse. Um, it's not the most stable. So now we have to rethink our structure and try to redesign it to improve it. All right, now that I've done some restructuring, let's try round two. Oh no. Okay, so I think that was a bit more of an improvement. And if you would like to continue working on yours, you're welcome to. So how did your structure go? Did it tip over? You may want to try to extend your base if that was the case. If it collapsed, try adding triangular shapes to your structure because these are stronger than squares or rectangles. And if it wobbles, try to add cross braces by adding diagonal supports to your squares. And those are just a few ways that you could help support your structure even more. Now let's talk about a real life example. Taipei 101 is one of the tallest buildings in the world. It is 1,667 feet tall. And they had several natural factors to consider when designing the building. Taiwan is sitting on the Ring of Fire region and has daily seismic, seismic events even though most of these can't actually be felt. Taiwan is also an island located in a typhoon-prone area, which is just the term for hurricanes in the Pacific Ocean region. And so engineers had to get very creative to build such a tall skyscraper in Taipei. Suspended between the 92nd and 87th floors of the building, the de they designed a massive pendulum which sways back and forth to control the swaying of the building. The pendulum weighs 728 tons and is suspended between five floors. It has counteracted winds up to 145 miles per hour, making the building much more resistant to weather and earthquakes. The building itself can sway up to five feet in any direction and be counterbalanced by the steel damper or the pendulum. Research more to discover the other engineering factors which make this building one of the most weather and earthquake proof buildings in the world. What did you think of this activity? Did your hypothesis work? How did you have to alter your original design? What did you learn in this activity? Do you think it's important to consider natural factors when engineering buildings and designing cities? What other factors would someone need to consider in Memphis? And what tests could you create to plan for those factors? I hope that you've enjoyed this activity and I hope that it's piqued your interest in engineering or environmental engineering and that you think about this more when you are looking around at the buildings around you and thinking about cities. Um, this is an awesome career you could go into 
and it also is just a lot of fun to build things. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day. Bye.